Let's continue to examine two more scientific unknowables of the very first verse in the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the very first verse of the Bible, we find a remarkable piece of evidence of supernatural authorship. In the beginning, time, God created the heavens, space, and the earth, matter. The Bible speaks of the creation of time, space, and matter in the very first verse. For thousands of years, scientists and philosophers had speculated about the basic components or makeup of the universe. It wasn't until the 20th century that physicists confirmed that the universe, at its foundation, consists of space, time, and matter. In fact, space and time are so tightly linked that astrophysicists now speak of a space-time continuum. While scientific and philosophical speculations about the basic structure of the universe has varied widely, the fact that the universe consists basically of space, time, and matter, a scientifically accepted fact since the 20th century, was clearly foreseen in the very first verse of the Bible, written 30 centuries ago. How could the writer of Genesis and the first verse of the Bible have known of this scientific truth that would not be confirmed until over 2,000 years later. But also, in the very first verse of the Bible, we find yet another astounding piece of evidence of supernatural or divine authorship. First consider this. It is an undeniable fact that the number seven is a biblical number of completion or perfection or specifically divine authorship. Over 500 times in the Bible the number seven is used to show the touch of God or divinity upon something. This begins with the seven first days of creation and the seventh being declared by God as holy. When we look at the natural world around us we discover that there are amazing arrays of sevens. There are seven continents on the globe. Modern geographical classification schemes count seven oceans in the world. There are seven colors in a rainbow. There are seven notes on a musical scale. There are seven stars in the Big Dipper, and this heavenly sign has been used to point to the North Star or the Guiding Star since the most ancient of times. Seven objects in our solar system are visible to the naked eye. Seven digits in a row has been proven over and over to be the average limit of memory for most human beings. Thus we have only seven digits in our phone numbers. There are seven metals of antiquity upon which civilization was based. The periodic table of elements consists of seven distinct levels. And on and on the sevens in the world around us go each representing God's divine touch of completeness upon something. Now with this in mind, consider again the very first words of the Bible, the very first verse, one sentence, translated in English as, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. It contains exactly ten words. But in the original Hebrew, there are exactly seven words. And these seven words possess seven distinctive features of the number seven contained within that sentence. As far as anyone has been able to determine thus far, only this one verse in all the Bible contains seven features of the number seven out of seven words. Consider these seven features. Feature number one. The number of Hebrew words in this verse is exactly seven. Feature two. The total number of Hebrew letters in the seven words is exactly twenty-eight, or four times seven. Feature three. The three leading words in this verse of seven words are of course God, the subject, and heavens and earth, the objects. 
The number of letters in the Hebrew words that make up these three words is exactly 14, or 2 times 7. The number of letters in the remaining words of the verse is also 14, or 2 times 7. Feature number 4. The expression of the two objects of this sentence, the heavens and the earth, in Hebrew, is made up of 14 letters, or 2 times 7. Feature number 5. The shortest word is in the middle. The number of letters in this word, and the word to its left, is 7. The number of letters in the middle word, and the word to its right, is also 7. Feature number 6. There are three important nouns in this first verse, God, heaven, and earth. The numeric gamatra values of these three nouns are 86, 395, and 296, respectively. Gamatra is the 3,000-year-old Hebrew rabbinical practice of assigning numerical values to each of the Hebrew letters. When these three numerical values are added together, the total value is 777, or 777, or 111, 111 times 7. In God's manner of biblical expression, this triple intensification of his perfect number 7 is the strongest possible manner of speaking the touch of his divinity. And feature number 7, the numeric value of the only Hebrew verb in this verse, created, or bara, is 203, which is exactly 29 times 7. These sevens, these numeric features or facts, are strangely hidden beneath the surface. They are truly beyond the view of ordinary readers of the Hebrew text, and they are discovered only by special investigation and counting. Surely they could not have been foreseen or purposely placed there by the original author. According to the law of chances, for any one feature of a seven-word sentence to be a multiple of seven accidentally is only one chance in seven. But for seven features of this one seven-word sentence to be a multiple of seven accidentally is one chance in 823,000 543. An exponentially amazing impossibility, especially considering that the number 7 is used purposely by the biblical writers over 500 times from Genesis to Revelation to indicate the divine touch of God. It is as though God is telling those who have eyes to see in the very first verse that His divine touch is upon this word we call the Bible. This startling revelation of sevens has only been discovered in the last few years of human history.